hello there welcome back to my channel so this is the second video that we are doing and this is a part of the same series which is azure iot data pipelines in the first video we have seen the overall architecture of the entire system how the data flows from the edge all the way to the database and in this particular video we will be using the edge part of it not using sorry exploring the edge part of it and we will be seeing how we can build a simulated device using python and send some randomly generated temperature value in a specific format to the iot hub so we are gonna tackle three things in this video the first one is the creation of the iot hub in the azure portal the second one is how do we create a simulated device in python uh, and that will be generated generating some randomly generated values and how we send that data to the iot hub and the last part is how we can use a toolkit called Azure IoT Explorer through which we can visualize this incoming data. So these are three things that we'll be covering in this particular video. So without wasting any more time, let's get started. All right. So we are in the Azure portal and I have already created an IoT hub for you. Name is test IoT hub of group 171. But uh, by the way, just before proceeding forward, uh, make sure you have an Azure account. Usually when you sign up for the first time, you will get 150 US dollars of credit to be used in the Azure portal. So I already have a subscription with me. So I'm going to stick to that particular subscription. So what we'll do is simply uh, click on this search bar and uh, we are going to type IoT Hub. Once you click on the IoT Hub, you can click on create. And then you need to uh, select the resource group. So in this case, the resource group is Avru171 hyphen YouTube. You can simply enter the name of the IoT hub that you want, and then uh, the same will be created. I am not going to create another IoT hub since I've already created. It might take a couple of minutes for Azure to uh, like uh, deploy this IoT hub for you. So after the IoT hub is created, you can again, uh, click on the search tab, click on IoT Hub, and then the same IoT Hub that Azure has created will be visible over here. In this case, it is test hyphen IoT hyphen hub hub hyphen of room 171. So once you click on that, you will see the IoT Hub that has been cre created. And here uh, we can create devices, we can manage the devices and perform a whole lot of other actions. So what I'm going to do is just ignore the error for now. Uh, so what I'm going to do is simply click on devices. As I mentioned earlier in the earlier video, like IoT Hub does provides a capability of using device management. So similarly, uh, we can create, edit or delete device. For example, what I will do is I'll simply delete this already existing device called H1 such that I can again create another one with the same name. So uh, to create a device, what you need to do is click on add a device. You need to enter the device ID. In this case, we'll keep it edge hyphen one. Make sure you select this particular authentication type. There are two more uh, types of authentication you can select. However, I'm going to stick with symmetric key. So what happens here is that it generates a set of tokens for you and those same can be used to form a connection string which can be used for your simulated or your actual device to connect to the IoT Hub and send data. So once that has been created, I will just click on save and your device will be created, I guess. Yeah. Okay. So once your device has been created, you must note down a couple of things. The most important um, parameter over here is this primary connection string, uh, which we are going to use at a later point of time in our code to get the same thing. So this is the most important parameter. So make sure you note it down somewhere. Obviously, by the time the video gets to this, this won't be there. So you won't be able to use this particular connection string. Anyways, let's move forward. So this is the first part where we uh, see how we can create an IoT hub and how we can create a device and what are parameters that are important uh, to note down when we are connecting our device to the IoT Hub. 
which is a primary connection string. This also contains the primary key. Uh, if you notice that this is the same key that is being used over here, uh, which is known as a shared access key. Anyways, so once your device has been created, we can directly jump into code and see how that works out. So um, we are gonna use Python as a programming language and there's a specific library that we use. Uh, let me just zoom in a bit such that it helps you out. I hope uh, it is visible and much more clear. So there's a library which you need to install, which is azure.iot.device. I think the pip is, uh, it's Azure IoT device. So you just use pip install azure-iot-device and the same will be installed on your system. So what I have done is essentially I have created a simple Python script. It contains nothing, just simple app.py, nothing else. And what it does is simply generate some randomly generate temperature values, uh, which is this, and it sends the data in a specific format, which we mentioned in the earlier video. So if you remember, let me just go back to that page. I hope I have it open. Um, yes, this is the one. So in the project information, we have mentioned the device name will be H1, parameters will be temperature, uh, device type will be simulated, and a sample data format will be device ID, temperature, and H timestamp. Similarly, when I go back to my code, you see that data format I have created the same way. So this is what we are gonna use to send to the device. Now let me explain you the structure of the code base. It's very simple, straightforward, nothing else. So we need a couple of variables. Since uh, we are using the asynchronous IO based Azure IoT device library, so that's why I used AIO. So you can use a normal one as well, but here in this case, we have used the asynchronous best one. So we need to import the IoT device client. I have used random to generate random values, date time, again, to generate the timestamp. Time is being used as a blocker, uh, such that this code will essentially send data every five seconds. And I think IO is obviously being used to handle the asynchronous operation. So you need to define your connection string uh, now this connection string is essentially the same one that we have used earlier. Uh, this is the primary connection string I'm talking about. So what I will do is simply copy this and paste it over here. Next, what I've created is I have created a method named send IoT, uh, send to IoT Hub. It contains a parameter, which is a data, uh, which is being uh, called here to pass this sample data object. So uh, once uh, this is a parameter of this particular function, uh, everything is kept inside try block. So first what I do is create a device client, uh, which is uh, uh, like I have to create a device client using the connection string. So f uh, the class that is responsible for doing it is IoT device client, which I have imported over here from the azure.iot.device package. Here we use a particular function that is create from connection string, which takes in one parameter, which is the connection string of that particular device. Next, what we do is simply connect to that particular device client that we have created over here. Once this client has been created, we'll simply be sending the message and print it out. That message has been sent to IoT Hub. Lastly, we simply shut down the client. That's it. Create the client, um, connect to the client, send the message, shut down the client, nothing else. If in case of any errors, we'll simply print it out. Now in main function, what I have done is simply I have created an infinite while loop. It generates a randomly generated temperature value using the random package. Um, I define the package in a dictionary, which is in data. And then I do async io.run, which simply um, executes this package, I mean, this function. So since it's, it's an asynchronous function, so the correct way, the, the, I mean, there are many ways how we can do it, but here I have used async io.run, and uh, then I'm simply calling the function and passing the named parameter data. Uh, here, you need to make sure that whenever you're passing the data, 
it is in string and it's not as a dictionary object. So for that, what we have used is JSON dot dumps, uh, which will convert this dictionary object to a string to a JSON compatible string. And that will be sent. And then I have simply put up a, uh, like a blocker method, which is time dot slip in, uh, and within the parameter I've sent five seconds. So it will simply make that call every five seconds, nothing else. And then I'm using executing the main function. So that is the overall structure of the code base is very simple. Nothing is here. Now this is a similar device in a real world scenario. Uh, this Python will be probably be getting uh, data from a real device, actual, uh, like from an actual device and that it will be sending probably in, uh, at the end of the series or at a later point of time, we'll be using a node MCU or an Arduino, which will send data to my PC using serial port communication, which I've covered earlier. And the same can be forwarded by a gateway script to the IoT hub. Uh, and this architecture is very commonly used in multiple places where your end nodes cannot directly communicate to the IoT hub because of certain restriction. And then it needs a certain gateway or a layer in between to do the same. In that case, it was serial port combination. It can be anything. We'll, like it, I just got a bit deviated from the actual topic, but we'll discuss on that later, probably in the next series. So yes, so that's the whole idea of this code base. You have the same IoT hub function and you have the main function and you simply execute it. Uh, this entire code base is available on GitHub, so you can simply clone it and start using it. And just make sure that you enter your connection string, like the one that you create uh, in the uh, IoT Hub and copy this primary connection string. Now what we'll do is simply we'll use another toolkit known as the Azure IoT Explorer toolkit through which we can visualize this data. Now, if you go to this particular URL, which is github.com slash Azure slash Azure IoT Explorer slash releases, I'll be pasting the link in the description. Here you can uh, find out the package that uh, is responsible. I mean, you can simply find download the package through which you can install this Azure IoT Explorer preview edition. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't find any package for Mac. So I have another PC with me, which is a Windows PC and I'm connected to the same PC using TeamViewer. I've already uh, downloaded uh, uh, this particular toolkit and it's available to me. Now, let me, you know what, let me simply delete this connection and I'll create a new connection from again. So once you open this Azure IoT Explorer preview, you'll get an UI something uh, similar to this. What you need to do is click on add connection. Now here you can see that we need to enter a connection string. Now this connection string is not your device connection string, but your IoT hub connection string. Now where can you get the IoT hub connection string? Let's have a look. Let's go back to the portal of Azure. Here you go to your IoT hub, which is this one, and then click on, on the security settings, you will see shared access policies. Click on that, and then you'll see a bunch of policies with certain permissions. Here we are gonna click on IoT hub owner, and here you will find your primary connection string. So you need to copy this primary connection string. Now go back to the portal and I mean to the toolkit and paste it. And then click on save. And as, as soon as I click on save, you see that the device is listed below. So all you need to do is click on your particular device ID, which is H hyphen one, click on that. And then on the left hand side, you'll see a bunch of options. So in this case, we are interested only in the telemetry section of it, since we are sending telemetry data. Once you click on that, there will be again a bunch of options. We'll simply click on start and whatever data we are sending from the Python state will be visible over here. Now let's go back to the Python state and execute that particular script to see whatever messages we are sending, are we receiving it or not? So to do that, I will open VS code simply python app.py so as soon as I execute you see the data is being sent once every five seconds so i hope the data is getting populated oh yes it is getting populated so if you can see this is these are the data points that we receive uh 26 48 39 
and if you see within the body like this is the most important thing like whenever you are receiving this message and whenever we do the next video where we actually work on the business layer that time we'll see how uh, we can intercept these messages and um, uh, write, write some business logics around it so here in the body section you will see your actual data packet which contains the device id the temperature and the edge timestamp now i i always prefer to use edge timestamp just to make sure like when the data has actually been generated uh, now these there are like different design uh, methodologies that can be used to capture the actual timestamp i prefer it this way such that whenever you're building real-time systems you capture one timestamp at the edge level and capture another timestamp after when your data has been processed so the difference between the two will give you delta uh, and we as uh, developers should always look into how you can decrease that delta as much as possible make it near real time that's a whole goal of using this approach but again this may vary from person to person i follow this approach uh, personally so that's it about today's video whatever data we are sending from this uh, particular um no sorry wrong code yeah that was my team viewer systems vs code and <laughs> uh, this is something else anyways so yes, uh, so once you open, uh, I mean, uh, we simply have a Python script that simply generates some randomized value and sends the data to IoT Hub. And uh, we have on the receiver side, we are using the Azure IoT Explorer toolkit to, uh, to see those messages. And we have also seen how we can create a device in the IoT Hub and uh, how we can use a connection string to visualize the data and also use the device connection string to send the data to the IoT Hub. So that's about it regarding today's uh, video. I hope you like this video. In the next part of the same video series, we'll be focusing on the cloud part of it. That is uh, how we can intercept these messages at a cloud layer using Azure Functions or uh, Azure Stream Analytics, and then how we can simply save the data to the database. So thank you for watching this video. Please hit the like button if you like this video. Please subscribe to my channel and do share this video amongst your friends and colleagues. I hope this video will be much beneficial to you. Again, as a uh, note, the same video that I uh, recorded right now, the same is available as a Medium article as well with uh, detailed steps. So the link is pasted in the description. You can uh, watch this video and then go, th go through the Medium article to do the same. So you can simply copy paste from the article or copy paste from the, uh, the GitHub URL and get started uh, with it. So that's about it. Uh, I hope you have a great day. And uh, till then, bye-bye. See you next week.